Welcome back, group. This is Mac T, and of course you can't see me, but I am here at Kronos Specialty Auto Works, and I have had a chance to take this beauty out here and get in it, and uh, maybe I can take it for a spin later. I doubt it, but anyway, I could always dream, but I did get a few photos of me sitting in it, and this is the first time I have ever been able to touch a Lamborghini in my entire life and actually sit in one, so for me, that was a special deal, but I am here having a great time, and then, of course, for the GM folks, yes, we got this uh, very limited edition Corvette, right? Z, what do they call it? Z06. Z06. One of 250. Two, one of 250 that were made. And uh, although this is a Ford group, you know what? We got to admire beautiful cars anyway, right? And this thing is a beauty. And of course, Kronos went and outfitted it with a small Sony stereo system. Well, maybe not a Sony, but anyway, they got it. I guess this thing will kick kick it down the road an extra couple mile an hour just from the force of the bass speakers, but uh, <laughs> I always want to make sure we do this. But first, I want to introduce you to the uh, owner of the company and his wife, and they'll give you their names and give you a little bit about the company. Uh, Bruce Wigan, that's my wife, Teddy. Hi. And we own Corner Specialty Auto Works. Um, I've been in the industry for about 30 years. Uh, we've kind of just started a whole new uh, venture here called Chrono Specialty Auto Works. We, uh, we decided to change things up a little bit, the way things are done in the industry. Uh, we definitely geared towards the high-end systems. Uh, we primarily focus on, on custom projects. Uh, we do also do window tinting, uh, clear bra, um, and, uh, and all different kinds of fabrication. We have a CNC machine that we do, uh, you know, custom work on as well. So, so you fabricate these uh, areas that need the fabrication to make them fit, right. uh, plastics and, and everything as far as that. Woods, fiberglass, metals. And then uh, so some window tinting occasionally. And, right. and, and, seat, and if I rip the leather seat in my Ford Edge, can I get it fixed here? All right. Well, I don't plan on ripping it, but who knows? I use it enough, right? <laughs> but uh, I'm going to go ahead and start the program, but these folks are gracious enough to host me over here at Kronos. And, uh, folks, I was drooling. Yes, I was outside drooling all over this. Lou has no idea how much jeopardy she's in, and me just stealing off in that electric spice edge but uh, that there is a, is a dream color for me but uh, let's go ahead and uh, get everything set up here and I'll start the program and go over what we always go over alright folks glad you all can join the group here and the first thing I always do, of course, is introduce all of our new members here. And we've had a good 20 or so that have joined up uh, since uh, last week. And we'll start out with Tracy. And then we got Jimbo, Jesse, Keith, uh, Diaz, Philip, Chris, Natasha, Ed, James, Kyle, Lynette, NM, John, Musa, Rob, Norberto, Caleb, Tony, Christopher, Harry, Steve, Michelle, or Michael rather, uh, Muhammad, and Archie. Welcome to everybody to the group and of course joining up on this Ford Edge uh, group that we really want to do is learn about our Ford Edge and of course we have all sorts of things going on, don't we? Uh, Let's see, what have we been talking about? I know I haven't been around, and, and uh, you know, I got Lou out there. Lou's running good, uh, almost 207,000 miles on her, and nothing to worry about. I'm running about 25 miles per gallon, so it's been a good time. But let's go ahead and check and see what we got. We got Dustin, he's putting something in there. He says his right front turn signal doesn't work even after replacing uh, everything in it, so he's wondering what to do. and 
and uh, the parking portion of the bulb even lights up. So I haven't really followed this that much, but uh, what I'm looking at, corroded terminals or maybe even a faulty bulb. Did you double check that bulb? Switch the bulb from the left side to the right side, see if you get the same results. Maybe the bulb is bad and that might be part of the problem there, Dustin. Uh, let's see, we got uh, Michael Anthony, he's out there changing his oil as always. And of course, what has he been up to? He's got some dirty oil, he says, but it's not that bad, Michael. You've been keeping up with that oil change and doing a great thing with it. And that's, again, maintenance is key to all these Ford edges. Uh, let's see, as you all know, I made it to Omaha safely, so that's always a good thing. And of course, uh, you know, I got a really nice hotel room too. It's pretty good, uh, as opposed to some other past visits. But anyway, uh, A5 navigation uh, maps. Okay, we have some issues with the, with the navigation maps. I'm going to let you all know what it is. Price, okay? Uh, Ford charges a lot to update just with an SD card to your navigation on your Ford Edge if you have navigation. It is a pretty pricey little card for what you get out of it, and it does not necessarily mean it's going to be up to date. You got to check the date on that map update before you buy it and then see if there's anything new coming out. Uh, I personally uh, do not really use my inboard navigation on my wife's Ford Edge. I usually fall back on my phone or my Garmin and utilize them because they're far more updatable, especially the phone. The phone is always updated so you can never get lost. Uh, but the navigation part of it, uh, you know, it's good but I'm not going to say it's the best. Ford it needs to allow us to utilize our phones to transmit into the uh, car, and I believe the SYNC 3 system might allow that to happen, but wouldn't it be great if we could take our phone and just transmit it as a navigation app to our uh, screen on our edge, and then we wouldn't have to worry about buying a card? Uh, so uh, this might be something that maybe us as owners can tell Ford we don't like and of course get that fixed up but for now we got to deal with the cards and the only way to do it is buy the card and do the upload and keep in mind that there have been problems with the uploads for the cards not being recognized and things like that so there's problems galore with that uh, let's see you die you die you're going to the burning man looks like you got a can of gas some matches hey you're set buddy <laughs> Hey, let's, what's that? You got a stuffed dog? Is that a stuffed dog? Holy cow. I don't know what you got in there, but okay, fire extinguisher, water, burn blanket. Okay, you're set to your die. You're all good. <laughs> it looks like you got food in there too. But uh, yeah, have a great time there. Send us some pictures of your edge out there. Sounds like lots of fun. Uh, let's see. We got, uh, we had, uh, let's see, terrible design by Ford. Let's see, what did you have a picture of? I'm trying to see what's going on here. And, uh, okay, the plug. Apparently, we have a plug that's getting put in here by Adam. Adam is, uh, holy cow, Adam, is that the plug off of your PTU? Wow. You might need to change that get that changed out and of course uh, get the uh, PTU fluid changed. It should not look black and uh, greasy like that and that looks like a bunch of uh, globules so <laughs> we know that that PTU and that's something that I'm going to be talking about in a little bit folks on you with you all about the PTU but we're going to go back further because you know how much I preach on the uh, PTU the power takeoff unit. Uh, well you know what there's something that you rarely hear me talk about, and that is the RDU. Okay, so we're going to talk a little bit here in the future about that RDU later, and I'm going to explain how to access it and some tricks that uh, mechanics are using to change the RDU out, uh, fluid out, rather than uh, taking it apart. So we'll talk about that and, of course, give you a little tips and tricks on how to maintain that Ford Edge all-wheel drive system so you don't uh, get in trouble Let's see, I know I did talk about the prediction of the, uh, uh, the engines for the Ford Edge. And I made a prediction that the 3.3 liter is going to be the new replacement for the 
Now, currently, we all, we all know it started out with a 3.5 early on, then they dressed it up in a sport trim, and then eventually they gave it a 3.7 Duratec, uh, more bore, same engine, just bored the cylinders out, a little bigger pistons, and uh, got a little more horsepower out of it. Now, that, those have been the workhorses for many years now, since 2007. So we're talking, uh, what, 12 years or more that this engine's been around, and that's a long time for an engine in the automotive world. And uh, what we're looking at now is, of course, the 2-liter turbo and the 2.7 twin scroll, twin scroll, I believe it is, is, of course, overtaking everything as far as the engine of choice with a 3.5, mostly in the titanium all-wheel drive model. But uh, what's happening is, is Ford is getting rid of it, folks. I do not expect the 3.5 to last many more years. Uh, the iterations are coming, the changes, and uh, they're, they're really aiming to downsize displacement. So uh, we're looking at, the, I think they still, for fleet use, folks, for fleet use, they still want a V6 version. You know, the ones they sell to car rental agencies and all this stuff, uh, they may be doing that yet. And that's why I think the 3.5 will make its debut in the Edge in the upcoming releases. And the best thing about the 3.5 that they currently sell in the F-150, folks, is that it has an external water pump. Yay! We got something going there. So if we go to that 3.3, it has an external water pump. That means we get rid of the Duratec internal water pump, and now we have a more serviceable water pump. It's something that is less pain in the behind, right? So, uh, and less catastrophic in, in the whole end of things. So, uh, I also believe that if they do put that 3.3 in there, that you can bet your do bottom dollar it's going to be a start-stop system. Yes, that means when you pull up that stoplight, the engine will kill, and when you hit the gas, just like your trusty golf cart, it'll start back up and then keep you moving down the road. And I really think that's what they're going to do, because I don't think they can do that with a 2.0 and a 2.7 turbo. That, that just, I don't think that would work out very well. And also, the new uh, design of the 3.3, uh, they throw in uh, for some of the engines, the new uh, changes will be, uh, instead of uh, GDI, or of course, direct injection rather, is they will be porting some fuel into the intakes. They say it's a new design for fuel efficiency, but in reality, folks, it is nothing more than a way to destroy and get rid of that buildup carbon on the valves by introducing fuel to wash over it to clean them off. So what they're doing is they're fixing a problem by adding this, this uh, ported fuel, in, fuel into the intake to, when it's under normal dr operating conditions, the fuel will come through there, and when you slam the throttle, folks, it'll go direct injection on you, and then, of course, you'll get all the power you want. But they're trying to fix that valve issue in the buildup of the actual uh, carbon uh, buildup on the valve. So uh, that's something that's good. Uh, let's see. We got Andrew. He's out camping, following trailers and everything else. Uh, we wish Andrew a, a good, safe trip so he don't overheat. He went yesterday, so he should be at the campground. Uh, let's see. David, you got that uh, door ajar light again. And, of course, that is the bane to everything. Uh, all I can tell you folks to do is if you feel like you want to, go to the Na National Tra Traffic Highway Safety Administration and register your complaint about the door ajar. They have made many, many recalls on that for everything except the edge. Yes, everything around the edge, but not the edge. So uh, if you really want to, the more people that complain, and of course, the more people complain, the squeaky wheel gets the oil, right? So maybe they do it. Maybe they'll actually come out with what we call a customer service program, uh, and that's a CSP, and that's, that's the next step just under a recall, folks. Uh, so if it goes bad, they replace it free of charge. And that is a pretty good program that's been working out for Ford for a while for a lot of issues. So uh, getting them uh, to do that would be a bonus too. Just a CSP would work out great. Uh, let's see, Dana, you went to Mills Farm Fleet and you put your new tires or got them balanced and then they put that strip of weights on there, 2.7 
five ounces of weight on the inner wheel. And that's probably not counting the other weights they had to put on there because I guarantee you they didn't do it right. Uh, and to put a strip that long on there, folks, you're supposed to start putting them side by side, building them up. You're not supposed to spread them out the whole wheel. Holy cow, that looks like a snake. But uh, I balance my own wheels. I know that's wrong, okay? And then if it fell off like that, that means they didn't even clean the inside of the metal of the wheel to help it stick. So whoever did it was a lackey that didn't know what they're doing. And unfortunately, we run across that a lot. But there's no reason for that to fall off, folks. That's just poor workmanship there and, and lack of attention to detail. Again, you're the customer. I tell you folks this. When you go to the garage, you're the customer. If they tell you your engine blew up, ask them to provide documentation, testing, and everything else to prove why. You're the customer. Demand the information and facts. Don't just say, okay, my engine blew up. What does that tell you? Why did it blow up? Tell me factually that it is blown up. How did you come to this conclusion? Through what data did you use? I want to see printouts of it. I want to see what you did. You're, I mean, would you go to a doctor, oh, you got cancer, you're dying? Wouldn't you ask questions? Yes. Ask questions, folks. Be a good consumer. The more we practice this, the more we can get the dealers to, of course, know that we are a customer and that we do demand to have some answers on to it. And the more they do that, the better they'll have more loyalty because then people feel like they're being served. So that's what we want to do. Let's see. That's my soapbox for dealerships anyway. <laughs> Roger, I see you went to Wally World. And yes, I've seen these formats there. And that is a one-size-fits-all deal. I did post my link to the Max Pider uh, 3D uh, floor mats. And, and uh, those are not rubber floor mats and they're water. Proof. Yes, you guys watch my video where CB, my daughter, got to pour water all over the mats. And, and what six-year-old does not enjoy playing with water, especially if dad lets her do it. So uh, she had a great time testing those out and showing you that they are ice cream gummy bear and water resistant. And, of course, juice box, too. So you, you, got, you, got, you got a six-year-old's recommendation on this. I don't know what more you guys need. You know, if she says they're good, then they got to be good. Anyway, Gabriel, you're out there in, I think, Brazil, and you've been working on your fans, and right now you're having a problem with your AC unit. Uh, you know, buddy, uh, how it went from not working to, you know, from working to not working when you change the fans, that perplexes me. There's something happened in the process. Uh, I hope you get it figured it out, uh, but I'm not there to be technical on it with you. Uh, only thing I can say is I know it's a pain. Take the old fan unit out, plug it back in. If the AC works, there you go. That aftermarket doorman is probably your issue. What do you think? Uh, I know it's a pain. It's only a 20 minute job. Plug it back in. Test it out. If the old fan does not cause your AC to have problems and the AC runs great, then you know your dormin replacement part, as I told you before, is no good. Okay? So OEM fans. OEM fans, my man. That's what you're really looking for. And then, of course, what else do we got? We got Jay uh, Hartsfield Holman. She's got that beautiful, newly painted black Ford Edge with the hot pink calipers. Yes. And she, of course, needs a boat, folks. All our prayers and wishes to all the people in uh, Texas that are undergoing this uh, hurricane and, of course, uh, the lives that have been lost. We all, of course, want to support our fellow members that are undergoing this extreme event and, of course, our best wishes and prayers for them. Stay safe, stay dry, and stay on the high ground. And do not drive in the water, folks. It is not worth it. Uh, just, just stay there, stay in your shelters, and, of course, all shall pass and keep in mind property can be replaced I don't care what you say how valuable it is property can be replaced so uh, you want to go there uh, let's see it looks like uh, Adam and Tyler I'm thinking they tied the knot so uh, they posted some pictures up there I can't quite read it never quite made it out but congratulations to them uh, for their beautiful day here today uh, Manoran, he's been uh, typing up a storm and putting out the SCT X4 scanner with two custom tunes for 
$3.99 plus tax. That's not a bad deal, folks. If you want to tune your edge, it's a 3.5 and the 2.7. And I think the newer 2.0s are included in that, along with the 3.7, 3.5. Uh, they all can have a tune, but uh, Mano is offered to help you. All you have to do is get your, uh, 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 what do you call it, the strategy uh, document to him as far as the numbers, and then he can help you get started towards that tune and, of course, get something wrote for the 2.0 2011 uh, turbo engine. There are no tunes available for it but we need the strategies off your engine. So you gotta provide the strategies. You do that, we can maybe get a tune ridden and we can make this little black hole of the 2011 2.0 turbo get some more ponies under its belt and get that uh, tune going. Cause right now that's, that's the only engine model year that doesn't have a tune. Uh, it's just a sad, you know, sad thing, but uh, we can get that going. That'll be a great thing and we can move on from there. Let's see, Roger got his car washed and it looks like it's ready to go out. Creme brulee, I guess. Creme de la creme, yes, nice and, nice and pretty, but I wonder if he washed all those bicycles and what are those, what do they call those little skate things you, you stand on? Anyway, uh, those, those are dangerous. I fell off of one. <laughs> My daughter had one and I hit a crack on the sidewalk and it, it, was, it was terrible, folks. It, you know, over tea kettle, that's all I can say. Uh, ambulances were called, paramedics, fire departments, uh, hospitals and doctors were involved. It was terrible. Anyway, uh, Mark, what do we got? We're looking for brakes. Oh, yes, the brake in the oil discussions, always there. Uh, Mark, I will tell you, I didn't tell you what brand I put on because everybody knows for the most part, but here's the deal. High carbon steel rotors and ceramic pads. Guarantee you, you will be happy with that combination. Uh, you can do any brand you want. Just make sure it's a high carbon steel and a high content ceramic pad. And if you have hot weather, heavy starts and stops, those ceramic pads come to their best once they heat up, okay? The warmer they get, the better they get. And you don't have to worry about brake fade or anything like that with those things. Those, those uh, will perform well. And to tell you the truth, once I put a set of uh, uh, high, co high carbon content rotors on my Ford Edge and a pair of, uh, or a set of uh, high content uh, ceramic pads, I rarely have ever changed my brakes again. No matter how far I've been driving, I've rarely ever had to change the brakes. Why? Because the things last forever. Uh, you know, it's just the way it is. But mine's all highway too, so I, I don't use brakes. I just let air and resistance stop me. <laughs> anyway, uh, what else do we got here? Oil filters, as always. Uh, I guess Motocraft's having a good sale on those. You can get a whole case of them by, for the same price as one filter right now, apparently. And we got new members posting their pictures of their edge and everything, and that welcoming them to the group. So by all means, uh, I did post that. Uh, strategy here and then it posted a copy of uh, a screen capture of mine for you so you knew where to look for it on the uh, Forescan light program on your Android phone so you could actually get that. Let's see what else we got. We got an issue with uh, heater not working and one of you of course posted what's going on with that. Check that actuator out make sure it's working there. And last but not least, I think we're pretty much done with what everybody's going. It's been a good week. We've been uh, talking about a lot of things with the Ford Edge. Uh, Mayweather and uh, whoever else was fighting, I guess one of them lost. Uh, I can't remember who. <laughs> I don't pay attention to it. Okay, McGregor lost. Okay, so the Irish dude lost and, the, and Mayweather won. So I, I think that was a given, folks. I think Mayweather beat him before. Uh, but uh, anyway... Uh, we're barbecuing ribs and everything else, so it's a great weekend for barbecue. Now, let's get into some of the good stuff, folks. RDUs. Yes. I will post up uh, the enhanced version of this in uh, my HD video that I'll post up later. I'll have the screen captures and everything of the RDU. 
in the directions that I'll post with the video up here. Uh, but I know we talk about the PTU all the time. Then you got the drive at axles all the way back, the drive shafts. And, uh, you know, there's, there's things that they do with those drive shafts, too. They, I know the first iterations of the drive shafts going to the RDU were originally three pieces. Yes, three pieces, three points of, of support, and it was just a mess. And then, of course, they did an upgrade, and now you can buy a two-piece unit. So you have a two-piece drive shaft that you're going to go back to your RDU. Now, this RDU, of course... Uh, most folks in Ford says the RDU, which is the rear differential unit, yes, the back axle. Uh, Ford says that that 80-90 weight oil is a lifetime oil. Raise your hand if you believe that it's a lifetime oil, folks. Give me a likes if you think it, you know, or, or growly face if you think uh, it's a, a lifetime fluid. Uh, no, it is not. It's, it's the same stuff that you're using in your... Uh, other part of your Ford Edge as far as your PTU. Now it is an 80-90 weight oil, but uh, here's the deal. Now I recommend, and Ford doesn't recommend it, it is me, I recommend that you go no more than 60,000 miles or you know, let's say three or four years. Okay, this fluid is being worked, especially if you're using it in the winter time and everything else. It is being worked. It is being crushed. The, molecular, the molecules are getting smashed and elastomers and all this other stuff getting messed up. You want to change it. It's not a lifetime fluid. So here's the deal. 60,000 miles, let's say, or about three or four years, whatever you come to first, you should take that, that fluid and drain it out. Now, Ford has a lot of different things they say you need to do. But the biggest thing that you need to remember is that you have a couple of ways to do it. And I'm going to tell you the, the Ford way first. And it requires that you have clear silicon and of course the 8090 weight SAA premium rear axle lubricant, which I would go with a, with a synthetic base uh, lubricant, folks, rather than the, the you know synthetic blend. Now the first thing you got to do, of course, is remove 10 of those uh, bolts on the cover. Now once you get those bolts off of the cover, then you can pry that thing off of there and, of course, clean it all up and then have a pan under it because it's going to get messy. But you get all that off of there and then, of course, drain it out, clean it out as best you can. You don't want to hose it down with any chemicals, but just let it drain and get everything out. Now, once you get that cover off of there, it's like any other differential, you're going to have to clean it up. Clean the surface up, use some brake clean, as I recommend around the seal surfaces so that you can get all the grease and oil off of there because what you're going to have to do, of course, is uh, make sure that you have uh, that, that clean because you want to put a silicone bead all the way around. And I have the, the posting here, but what you do when you put that silicone bead on there, you go around the outside edges of all the holes on the cover plate. Okay, don't go on the inside, you go on the outside. Yes, the outside of it. You put it in there all the way around and let it set for a little bit, about 15 minutes. And then, of course, then you can go ahead and slide that bad boy back in there. And then, of course, uh, bolt it back up. Then you take the, the fill plug out and then you start filling it up with approximately, what was it, uh, I think is uh, 1.15 milliliters or 2.43 pints of this uh, fluid, 80-90 weight fluid you're going to be putting in there. Now, it's a pretty simple process. Take the cover off, clean it up, and then, of course, put the silicone on there, put it on there, and then you fill it up. Well, here, let's go back a couple steps here. Okay, first of all, when you do put the silicone on there, you're going to have to wait. Wait at least 30 minutes to an hour is what I'm reading here. You got to let this stuff set. You can't just start dumping the oil in there in the lubricant. Otherwise, you could get a leak. You want to make sure that whatever you do, you get it torqued to spec and the tighten them to, uh, what do they call it, 17 uh, foot-pounds for the 10 bolts. And then, of course, remove the filler plug and, of course, dump that in there. And you're going to tighten that up to 21 foot-pounds when you do that. So when you tighten it back up, there's going to be a little socket uh, ratchet driver looking thing there that you're going to be 
pulling it out with. It's not a bolt, but it's a little plug. But uh, let that silicon dry. Once the silicon is dry for about 30 minutes to an hour, then you can fill it up with, uh, with the uh, 80, 90 weight oil. Now keep in mind, you wanna check for leaks. So you wanna let it set, let it cure, fill it up, drive it, check for leaks. Check for leaks the next morning. Okay, how do we get away from checking for leaks? You guys remember uh, when I did my transmission fluid change and I used that Pella vacuum uh, system? Yes, the Pella. Here's, here's the shortcut, folks. And I know it from good, good word that uh, mechanics at garages do this. They shove that Pella in there, get it down into the bottom, and then they form the vacuum, they suck that old gear lube out of there, and then they refill it. You're done. No silicon, no taking bolts off, no crawling underneath the car to do all that work. You just suck it out with the Pella and then refill it. Now how easy is that? Okay, that is what I would do. Why tear the cover off if you can just suck it out with that $50 tool? that now you can use to change your transmission fluid, your motor oil, your power steering fluid, your RD fluid, and your PTU fluid. 50 bucks for this device. Now I'm not selling it, but I'm saying it saves time, saves effort, and makes the job easier. So the RDU, suck it out with, you know, with a, like a Pella. It's got a small hose that'll fit down in there, in between there, and get down to the very bottom. You suck it out, clean it out and then add the new fluid and you're good to go. You're going to get a, at least 90 or more, more percent of the fluid out by doing it this way and it's less fuss and muss and that RDU gets a new fresh fluid and we all know that fresh fluids help the vehicle get better gas mileage. Ask anybody, you change all the fluids in something, now all the fluids are no longer heavy, they're not viscous, they're, they're very very thin because they're all new and they help everything run better and you get better gas mileage. So keeping your fluids in good shape gives you better gas mileage. So change those RDUs out. If you got over 60,000, I would recommend you changing that fluid out if you've never done it. It's not, it cannot be a very expensive deal even if you pay somebody else to do it. But go with a full synthetic. That way you get a little more longevity and a better, better oil out of the deal and help it run better. So uh, do that. But that is a very simple process and a very simple maintenance technique for your RDU, rear differential unit on your all-wheel drive Ford Edge. And of course, it is a great, great thing to have done and helps your Edge last a lot longer. But that is pretty much here. I'm of course at Kronos. I'm having a great time today. Uh, here in uh, Omaha, Nebraska, and I always have fun meeting new people, and this just tickles me pink to sit here and do this remotely at this location. But as with all things, of course, this is Mac T Ford Edge on the uh, Facebook group, and join the Facebook group. All you have to do is ask to join, and somebody will let you in, unless, of course, you look like a, you know, I don't know, somebody wants to kill us or something, but we let everybody in. We're pretty nice folks. We ask you all to abide by the kindergarten rules. And then, and of course, YouTube. Yes, my YouTube channel. Whatever you do, join up on a YouTube channel there and subscribe and get those notifications. Hit that little bell. That way you get notified. And if you're looking for an answer from me on YouTube, again, I will remind you the notification bell is not working for me. I cannot tell when you put something in there on there. So I will redirect you back to the Facebook group to post your questions and concerns. That way we get good quick answers. But again, uh, if you feel like it, uh, I do have the YouTube channel there. Of course, donations at Blue PayPal. Make sure you hit that to help keep this channel working and help me with equipment and everything that I always have to have to do this and to keep these videos going. But again, my fee hit the floor today and I'm having a great day. And I want you to have a great day too. And as with all things, Mercy Girl is going to have throw a couple one-liners at you, as she always does, and then the band of one's going to play some great music, as he always does for my videos, and I will have bonus footage of me running around Kronos here, and of course, uh, they are always willing to help you if you have audio questions, and of course, want to upgrade. I'm sure they'd be willing to help you if you're in the area, but this is Mac T, so have a great day. 
Should I do something crazy? Bye, guys. Now I'm going to do the uncomfortable thing of turning the camera off.